Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmazano here, and my good buddy Anthony Stauffer from Texas Blues Alley posted another one that I just, I can't let go. I can't let this one go. It's Buddy Guy, Sweet Home Chicago uh, from 91, but his new channel, Vintage Blues in 4K, he upscales them, right? And I saw one little face shot like that he, it, that he posted on Facebook, and I was like, no, no, we're doing this right now because it looks outstanding. Let's do it. Please welcome Mr. Buddy Guy and Bands. The original Buddy Guy and Bands. Look at that. Love those that did it. Oh, there's so many great things I love about Buddy Guy. Um, I I just love that he does not give a crap about where you think he should bend to or from. Just this, we're blues and E, one, four, five, right? So many cool things he's doing in there. <laughs> These little, but this that just, just, just straight on through past the five. Just take it, you know. He gives the other guitar player a little wink, like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah," and then he just goes to walk up to the mic, and we go to see what he says. I love how casually his with with the that and then just just did with the open strings. She's like, normally we think we're in this spot, we're in this spot, we're in this spot, but he's clearly playing like the whole neck at the same time. Like he's but thinking about it that way. Rumble. This drummer is really on. Symbol way up top in the middle like that. Hard to do a big Texas shuffle like that. Let's talk about a little bit of what he's doing in here because we're all guitar players, we wanna know, right? So this. That. What this is here, minor third and fifth in E. So like this, this would be a piece of your E minor. Now I know you're all saying out there, isn't it E7, it's a blues, aren't my one, four, five chord all dominant? Yes, so why are we coming in with the minor third? because the third, the higher third, right, always wins in tonality. The sound of the blues literally is the minor third being played behind the major third. The, the band can all play the higher third, right, the G sharp, but you can come in with the G and it's that, it's this over top of that is sound of the blues. That's why that works. So he's doing this. 
and then going down all the way down into pattern four open position and doing the same basic thing. Four, flat three, root. So minor position here, pattern two, to a major or to another minor position here, open pattern four. And then right here, what does he do? He's taking the same fingering, if you would, the second finger leading and the first finger behind it, but now he's switching to the third and second strings to get the major third now and fifth of the four chord, which is of course A7. So this time he's playing straight on the chord tones. So you're saving your bluesiness, if you will, for the key center of E, right? You're letting your four be a, a true four. Outlining that, that. Yeah. Love these little chromatic walk downs. From B down to A. So of course you're wondering how does this work? Because this is obviously the two, flat two or flat nine <clears throat> and root of your A7. It works because ultimately what you're doing is implying that key center back to E, right? So this is your five flat five four in the key of E. So when the chord goes back there, you can, you can stick it right on that E. And then right in. Now he goes up in this position. What is this? We're back on the one chord. This is the five, which is B. And again, flat seven. We're thirdless in the key of E. You'll see a lot of players do it like this and add that full G sharp diminished thing, which is of course just major third, five, seven. Right? But that, just in two notes like that, it just, it just burns. Slide into it. Now wait a minute. Yeah, he just switched fingers. Now you're you're hearing the major third being incorporated. Your G's are becoming a G sharp, but he's doing a hammer on that 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 that. that. Now it's loose in there, right? This is not like super clean, right? Because he's he's all energy. This is not about being sparkly crystal clean. Yeah, he loves it, man. Little turnaround. One of the best showmen I've ever seen. He used to always play the bottle and cork and do beat. Walk out, you know, go hunting around, finding people. Going to that same old place. Love it. Ooh, little hiss from the mic. Sing a little louder than that. Can't let them sing. Come on. Baby, don't you wanna go? Telling you, one of the best I've ever seen in person with the crowd. By the way, all those that are coming down, right? This little turnaround, right? Uh, this is your, uh, 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 <laughs> sorry, fifth and flat seven of E, walking down. Remember, your turnarounds always end up like on a five. So you're either 
going up from the five from your major third or down from the or down to the five from your flat seven. So in this case, flat seven going down, right? And what's cool here is you also get this five coming down to the major third there. And then of course the chromatic four sharp four flat five five and then stick your B7. Real quick, I just want to say, one of the things that makes Buddy Guy so great is that his voice and his guitar voice are extremely different. His guitar voice is mean and nasty and like un unclear, right? It's raw, right? It's not polished at all. It's pure aggression. But his actual singing voice is clear as a bell. Perfect. Like so clean so clear and pure. That dynamic, that's, it's such a great combo. In my opinion, that, that's why Buddy Guy is who he is. It's, it's, he has two distinct blues voices, which are completely complementary. Here's this band. Burn it. This rhythm section is, is incredibly tight and huge. Band is through that floor all day. Fearless, fearless. It's got that good sound. I even got an eyebrow raise from the bass player. Watch. Huh. It's hard to get an eyebrow raise from a bass player. Bass player doing those descending slaps in an octave like that. The rhythm section is killer. Look at that, look at that. By the way, real quick thing to point out here. When you're playing a blues, you know what, any type of music, but, but you don't always have to play the full chord shapes. You're seeing, you're seeing Buddy basically stick to the major third and fifth of each of the chord he's playing over, except on the one. On the one, you're seeing him stick to the five and flat seven, right, for E. When he goes to A, you see him go to the, 
right? Major third and fifth, and over the B, you see him go to that major third and fifth. So he's moving this. Just two frets at a time. This is your one, four, five. One, four, five, four, one. And just letting the bass and drums just power through. You don't always have to do the right or the right you don't always have to do all that it depends how busy the band is how busy you want to be does it make sense or not are we in a quiet part are we in a loud part whatever but it's important to notice that buddy is just moving those two fingers and allowing the open E string to move to achieve all three chords. I love sliding off of that, doesn't he? Woo! Look at that, look at that! Again, you guys know me. You hear something, you're like, ooh, what was that? Stop, figure out what it is. He immediately does this flat three to the nine to your root here. Again, for all you intermediate beginner blues players, start in your major pentatonic. Right? But you have nines, you have sixes, right? Don't forget about them. You hear, buddy, you know? And that, that's got a very distinct sound. What is that? What is that? Well, in the blues, in particularly, you get this nine because that is the fifth of your five chord. So in B, F sharp is the fifth, and it's also the nine in E, right? Or the two. So that gives your ear a little like, are we going home? Are we going home? It's not just. You're like, where do we want to go? You want to go to one. It's just a little implication, right? So he doesn't do it over the five. You know what? And through it. That's why I love you, buddy. Bend through it. Yeah, dude, buddy guy's the man. By the way, those chords on the end. This is, looks like a minor seven flat five on, uh, on G sharp, but what this really is, is a major third flat seven, nine and fifth of your E7. And you can, you know, drop it down chromatically. Little lesson, I need to do a full lesson on this, but the top triad of a dominant seventh chord is the diminished triad in key. Let me say that again. The dominant seventh chord is a one, three, five, flat seven. If you take just the three, five, and flat seven, that is a diminished triad. So if you're wondering where you play your minor seven flat five, where you play your diminished triad, where you play your diminished scale, it is in the top triad of a dominant chord. Take it to the bank. All right, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy this style lesson, reaction. Uh, it's all broad strokes, but it's like the key takeaways for what you want to listen for and practice um, when you're going through here. Blues 145. You saw a bunch of different voicings. You saw some buddy guy, you know, to the moon and back bends. You saw a little flavor of the nine, but mostly you just saw incredible attitude and showmanship of buddy guy and confidence. Killer, killer rhythm section. The drummer and the bass player were on top of it. I don't know who that other guitar player is. Also, 
on it. it. Was a perfect foundation for Buddy to let Buddy be Buddy. But then when it was his turn, Buddy loved listening to him just as much. He took it, sounded great, love it. Um, and big shout out again to Anthony because this Vintage Blues and 4K channel is awesome. The link will be in the description. Please subscribe to it. It looks and sounds fantastic. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, please like, please subscribe. If you like what you see here, if you'd like to take my lessons and courses, you're curious about my whole curriculum that I've built in my community, which is called GuitarGate, it's the first link in the description. I'd love to be your online teacher, and obviously, it helps support all the free stuff you see here on YouTube. It's how I make a living, and it's just a community of people sharing music, trying to inspire and motivate each other to keep this thing in our hands, to just get a little bit better every day. That's my little pitch. I love you all so much. Have a great day. Cheers.